You know, there's a question that's being asked a lot right now. And whether you're in week six or seven or eight of quarantine, I know that I've asked it. You may have asked it. Your friends are asking it on Facebook. I know my friends have asked me on uh, Marco Polo. And I mean, it's a really tempting question. I think here's the question. When are things going back to normal? When, when I think about that question, I think about how it, I mean, it, it insinuates a turning, like a looking backward into the past. It makes me think of the, you know, alumni personality that we talk about that shows up and talks about the good old days, right? Like, I, I think that some of us, you know, I'm not even sure that, that we'd say the fall or last spring or even the last 10, 15, like, when were the good old days? Maybe a better question would be, how can we be a part of creating a new normal? I was, I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts recently, and the host used this analogy, and I uh, shared it with Aaron, and, and oh my gosh, he said, trying to keep uh, looking backwards is like coming out of the, the spring, the winter, holding on to an ice block as it's melting in our hands. And what do we do when it melts? Honestly, I think, uh, and hit the thumbs up emoji if you agree with this statement, I'm not sure that the normal that we're tempted to go back to was actually you know, fully working for many of our organizations or our members. We have an opportunity as professionals that are leading the industry to encourage our organizations, our teams, our students to ask bigger questions. Like, like how can we be a part of creating the new normal? And for me, when I think about the new normal, I think about marketing and the way that we're attracting this new generation of student. The thing that gets me excited is, is to answer their hard question. Like, prove it. They're asking, is this really worth it? I, mean, I think you and I both know that it is. And, and I think that we have real specific answers that we can, that we can lean on post-quarantine that will, that will attract uh, and help us secure even more of this new generation of student. I my binge watch uh, Netflix for quarantine has been Lord of the Rings. I've I've never never watched Lord of the Rings before. I figured, hey, now I got time. I might as well watch some Lord of the Rings. And uh, I just think about how can our marketing efforts look like the Samwise to these potential new members this fall and this summer to their Frodo, uh, you know college experience, their life experience? How do we amplify their college journey? Thinking about the way that we attract, that we're speaking to this potential new member that's coming this summer, post COVID-19, just gets me excited to think about what the new normal of fraternity and sorority marketing could be. Happy afternoon, everybody. My name is RJ, and I have the privilege of getting to help lead our education and strategy teams here at Fired Up. And before we dive in, uh, I want to kind of orient everyone. Uh, our goal is to make this as conversational as possible. So uh, this is called Pros That Grow. Hey, you're here on a webinar at three o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Uh, dreaming with us about the new normals of fraternity and sorority. You are a pro that grows. So we would love for you to jump in that chat box, uh, use the emojis, uh, engage in conversation, and let's dream together really fully, not just us as the panelists and, and helping to lead the conversation on the video. I'd love to have everyone on video if we could, just technology and Matt Matson said, keep it to five. So we did. So um, I would love to have everyone on video, but let's get in the chat box. Let's be together as we're dreaming about these new normals. I'm, I'm here with one of my friends, one of the most data-driven growth mindset professionals around recruitment in our industry, Aaron Chatton. Aaron, I want to uh, kind of pitch this over to you, let you introduce yourself. When I'm talking about new normals, the ice blocks melting in our hands, kind of what comes to mind for you? What do you get excited about in the new normal? Uh, appreciate you, RJ. And hello, everybody. Welcome to a Fired Up Friday, and thank you for being here at 3 p.m. Eastern on a Friday. You guys rock. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, you got like people who know me, uh, know that I'm an optimist. Uh, people know that I'm an innovator. 
Uh, people also know, as I can see in the chat box, that I absolutely love data. Uh, and you might hear me say data is sexy, maybe more than you'd ever want anybody to say it in your life. Uh, but what I get really, really excited about is uh, an idea for a more authentic recruitment. Mm. More authentic ways that people joining fraternity and sorority. And honestly, that's what really excites me is that, yeah, I, I love the analogy of thinking about the ice block and going from winter into spring and how like, if we keep holding on to what was, it's eventually going to melt in our hands. But you know what? Uh, that melted ice block is going to help grow what comes next. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you to imagine that like ice block melting. It's going into the plants. We got some springtime stuff. I even got some lily of the valley from my garden here. Uh, of just that growth that comes with this new season and there is a new normal coming and we get to choose what we want to introduce into it and what we want to keep behind. I am so excited that we are here um, with some headquarters professionals uh, who we're going to share a conversation with and whether you are watching this live right now uh, or whether you're watching it recorded later, you are a part of this conversation. Uh, here's what I would like everybody <laughs> got comments on product placement. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would like everybody who is here with us live right now to do. And if you are not live, I want you to reflect on this. In that chat box, I want you to tell me what is the one thing that you hope becomes part of the new normal for our industry? Right here in the chat box, what's the one thing that you hope becomes part of this new normal for our industry? Start thinking that through. And while we do that, while you're thinking of that new normal, I want to introduce some wonderful, wonderful humans uh, that are going to be joining us for our conversation today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to turn on your camera at this time. We've got some wonderful individuals. We have Bilal Babrud in here with us, Amanda Fishman, and Rye Beck. And so I'd like to turn it over to you guys now. Amanda, you're directly to the right of me on the screen, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on you first. But Tell us who you are and what's the one thing that's a new normal that you're excited to bring in for this industry. Awesome. Thank you so much, Erin. Um, first of all, I'm thrilled to be here, thrilled to be part of this conversation. I've been a big fan of Fired Up Friday since its inception. Um, always loving what y'all are doing. So it's just really cool to see my face on the screen to be part of this conversation. Um, my name's Amanda Fishman. I work on staff uh, for Alpha Delta Pi. Super lucky to have the role of a collegiate services specialist on staff. There are four of us representing our four districts and I work with our Southeast district. So half of Louisiana over in South Carolina down. Uh, I work with about 40 chapters and all of the volunteers that touch those chapters. Uh, my Affiliation is actually with Pi Beta Phi, uh, so super proud to be a member of that organization, and I actually volunteer quite regularly with Pi Phi as well. I'm an international officer. I'm a facilitator for some of our uh, workshops. Uh, I also volunteer with Cap Kappa Gamma. I also volunteer with NPC a little bit, so I try to dabble because I have a very panelinic heart. Um, I have volunteered with some fraternities as well in the past, um, so just always trying to um, keep things interesting in my world. Um, in the COVID days, not only am I working from home here in my apartment, um, but I also bought a home. So I am trying to moonlight as Joanna Gaines um, with some house renovation projects that a lot of people have been very invested in. So um, am I sharing my new normal, what I'm excited about now? Right. Um, so my new normal is really um, twofold. One, I love to throw pasta on a wall and see what sticks. Um, so I feel like that is the space we a lot of people are going to be in. I'm not going to be the only one in the room that enjoys doing that. It's going to be everybody because we've had to be innovative and creative. Um, so I love pasta because carbs and also for that concept is throwing it on a wall. Um, and then also the conversations about self-care and the care for others has just been unreal lately. And so I really appreciated that. And I, I really hope that is a new normal. Um, the conversations about mental health become more normal and routine. And that's what I'm looking forward to. All right, Rye, we'll kick it over to you next. Follow along the line here. Perfect. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rye Beck, and I currently serve as the Director of Fraternity Growth for Delta Sigma Phi. 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it short and simple with that for, for the introduction um, and jump right into the conversations we're all excited for this afternoon. So uh, some new normals uh, for us um, are that I'm excited about. Uh, I think one, just echoing the same comment, like let's just be more agile organizations. Let's just be more adapt to change, not just um, in times like this that are a little bit reactionary to a situation that's um, not very exciting for everyone, or at least not very, or it's a little bit painful, um, but actually just getting in the mindset that change should be happening all the time, or at least the consideration of change. And hopefully as we move forward, we're not just thinking differently about the way our organizations are structured or the way we're executing on different ideas we have, but just always innovating in some new idea that maybe we didn't even know needed to be innovated. So just that mon mindset, um, all the way from a, a board level to a volunteer, to a student, to a staff, um, I think just all of us thinking a little bit differently. And then maybe a small thing that I'm excited about also, uh, over the last couple months, we've probably been inundated with charts. Anytime you look on CNN or anything like that, it's just like, here's a new chart, here's a new chart. Maybe we'll all just be collectively better at reading data and understanding that and understanding kind of the impact that has. And that in itself will be a game changer for the way we approach different conversations, just an appreciation and understanding for um, what information tells us and what that means to us. So that's what I'm excited about. You know I'm here for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's kick it over to you. Introduce yourself. What's the new normal you're excited for? Deal. Um, so as we stated earlier, my name is Bilal Badudin. I currently serve as the chair for the National APITA Panhellenic Association. Um, I also work full time at Howard University as the chief of staff for the Division of Development and Alumni Relations. And in my spare time, I am a full time PhD student. Um, so that is my entire life. Um, but then in addition to that, um, I am I'm the past national president for Delta Epsilon Psi Fraternity Incorporated, which is my affiliation. Um, and then I have served um, as a campus-based professional on a variety of campuses um, prior to starting my PhD. Um, in terms of what this new normal will be, um, I think we all want to know, and I think that we all know what our roles are in creating that. Um, but for me, I really, um, my hope is that this new normal um, is reflecting and thinking about how we can make the work that we're doing accessible to everyone. Um, and so I know that a lot of um, organizations in this past month and a half, two months, um, have really thought about you know, their pricing structure in terms of how are they going to relay information to folks who have been furloughed or laid off? You know, um, How are they um, caring for their students who might be going through a tough time financially? And so for me, um, that is something that's always on my mind. And so I think that it's important that now that larger organizations are thinking about this, that we continue to do that um, in the future. So um, just like Rai said, like I know we've been reactive leading up to this, but now it's our time to be proactive with that same mentality. So. I love that, Bilal. I think that that is something that, uh, that our industry for, for a long time, we've just continued to grow and grow uh, in one direction when it comes to finances in our in our world. And, and now really the whole world's having to stop and think about, you know, how, how can we help each other right now? Like this is the time where a lot, I mean, so many people are hurting. Like how can we be, how can we lower your, lower barriers of entry all across the board, you know? For Aaron, I know that uh, that we've got a couple of questions that we want to start uh, our commerce our, our panel with today. Uh, also, I just want to point out on everyone's screen, we've got a, a little a bubble at the top of your screen. Go ahead and toss your questions. If you have any questions, toss those questions in. We're going to try to get to those on the back third of our time together uh, this afternoon. Um, and so, yeah, if you have any questions that come up, put them in the chat box or toss them up. Uh, in that uh, question section at the top of your screen. I'd love to just kick us off, Aaron, if you're cool with it, uh, with just allowing our our guests to, I don't know, brag a little bit. But um, I guess I'm curious, and, and we can start with Bilal. We can, we can work our way backwards. I, I'm curious, you know, in the wake, you know, in response to COVID-19, what's something that you're especially proud of, um, maybe a new normal that you're a part of, uh, that you're excited about that, but that you're, you're really proud of something that you're involved with, with your organization or with Napa or at Howard. For sure. Um, so 
I guess actually leading up with both. Um, so in my role in development and alumni relations at Howard, uh, commencement falls under um, my purview. And so um, tomorrow, actually, we'll, we will be streaming a, uh, a live uh, virtual conferring of degrees in course. And so um, that is something I'm proud about because, I mean, in all reality, our, our students have been working towards this for however long. And so um, it's important that we recognize them. And so even in my role as Napa and really understanding that um, this year, Napa is actually where pulled, we're getting all of our member organizations to um, let us know who their graduates are from all of their chapters. Um, and so even as Napa, we will recognize them on our website, uh, primarily because for a lot of our organizations, our graduates, not only are they looking forward to wearing their cap and gown, but also their stole with their letters, right? And so um, for us, it's important to recognize them on our website so we can say like, yes, you not only graduated and you're affiliated, but you're doing a lot of great things as well. And so just celebrating that in that way. I love that from the perspective too of like that recognition from that council level too. Like you don't always expect to be recognized by a national organization. So getting to see like your name and getting to see your photo displayed, like that means a lot to people, especially right now. So like, I love that you guys are doing that, like killing it, keep it up. Rob, what, what do you got? What's one thing that you want to like, I like this. I think we're like letting you guys brag a little bit. Like, what do you want to brag about? What's something that you're proud of, of right now? Right. Uh, some of this might sound similar to what well, I'll just shared. Um, so when all this kind of went down in, in early March or late February, um, we were really proud of the fact that we quickly moved to create, um, I guess, enhanced online new member education for our members, for the chapters that no longer were able to conduct those uh, in-person activities uh, together. Uh, and so we helped facilitate that for chapters or just straight up did it for them um, uh, alongside those different groups. And then we also moved to uh, online initiations. Um, which we thought was very exciting. Our executive director or board members joined each of those. So we did probably ended up doing 50 of those, like chapter by chapter. We allowed that to be uh, just a one-on-one -on -one experience. We invited alumni uh, to each of those, which was probably the most incredible part of the whole thing. Alumni who are now you know, scattered across the country or the world who would never be able to make it back to their home campus were able to now feel re-engaged uh, through that ceremony. Uh, ceremony. Um, and I know our members, our new members felt really excited about this lifelong experience that they were joining and they got to see that maybe in a way that they didn't. Um, and we're just keeping that going. So on May 17th, so I, I guess we're less than 10 days out now, we'll be conducting a, a grand chapter meeting. Um, and so we're hoping to have over 400 uh, participants or attendees for that, um, where we'll also recognize uh, graduating seniors. We identified them in advance. Uh, shipped stoles to them for free, like just said, here you go. We were able to do some fundraising for that and we'll have some ceremonies and recognition for them as well too. Uh, and, and then again, that's not just restricted, that event's not just restricted to members. It'll be open to anyone who cares to join. I think we put on our social media pages and things like that. So if anyone's on this call and just want to see us either succeed really well or fail in an attempt, uh, go for it. Um, we'd love to have you on there, but that's just a way to keep the communication going in regular touch points. And we're just really proud uh, of just the response that we received and the support we received from uh, just all of our stakeholders and volunteers, both members and non-members who have just rallied around that student experience to say, we want to help you wherever you are right now, whether you're a new member, where you're a graduating senior, whether you're an officer facing challenges, um, you're not alone in this. And there's a lot of communication over communication um, to help feel uh, feel that support. So, so yeah, so we're pretty excited about in the short term what's happening. I know later on we'll talk about some future plans as well, but right now that's what that's what we're excited about. One of the coolest things. Oh, sorry, RJ, go ahead. Yeah, I just love that. Like, I, I it's so, uh, we don't have to overthink this. Like, this isn't, uh, th it's human connection. We don't, it's rise, not overthinking Delta six, not overthinking this. Like we have members that have worked really hard, uh, and have come through a lot of adversity in their life. Uh, that this is a, a huge accomplishment for them to graduate. Or if, uh, you know, the, the pinnacle of the new member experience as they go into initiation, like not allowing that to, to just to fall is not a priority anymore. Like, no, this is a priority. I, Anna in the, in the chat box over here was like, we're being forced to be flexible and think outside of the box. And sometimes thinking outside of the box is as simple as just care for our people. 
like in this time, like I just, right. That was, it's awesome, man. I want to be there. I want to, I want to get that link. I'll follow you on, on social media to get it. Amanda, I'm curious, uh, from your perspective, what's one thing right now in your role that you're really, you're really proud of? Um, I, first and foremost, I want to give it up to our chapter officers and our volunteers that are supporting our chapter officers. Um, they are making our jobs um, very easy in light of everything going on. And we've just been so impressed about the things that they're doing to celebrate their seniors or keep their alpha members engaged. You'll hear me say alpha members and delta members. It's how we differentiate our new members and uh, initiated members. Um, but our alpha members that didn't get the chance to be initiated or were rushed into an initiation before campus closed, um, how do we keep them engaged and make them feel this tangible um, sense of sisterhood virtually? Um, so really want to give it up to them for being innovative and also not making it very hard. So anything from virtual formals, throw on a dress, pop onto Zoom, make it happen. Um, we'll, we'll do like some silent disco type situation um, all the way to virtual 5Ks. Those existed before COVID. Um, and so we're able to still do philanthropy. We're still able to engage people and to, you know, share that opportunity for anybody to be engaged with our organization, not just members, um, by doing things like that. As an organization, as a membership team, some of the things that we've been doing that I'm most proud of is really just kind of the mantra we're living by right now, which is to streamline and to collaborate. So we've made things very easy for our chapters by giving them three key spring priorities to focus on. Of course, there are so many other things in what I'm about to list, but we felt that these three things were, okay, campuses are closing. Within a week of all of this kind of happening, we got together pretty quick and said, these are the three things you're gonna need to focus on in case our campuses are closed for the rest of the semester, which they ended up being. So number one, senior engagement and celebration. Right, you guys are doing that, that's awesome. So all, same to you all, that's so great. The alpha and delta belonging and engagement, emphasis on the words belonging and engagement. What does that look like when you don't have a brick and mortar physical location to do that? And then the financial transparency and management because I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. The finances piece is obviously, um, you know, that'll be the first thing on the chopping block for a lot of members in terms of making their decisions of what they're involved in engaged in the year to come, so. Uh, I think the thing I especially love there is that emphasis on the belonging piece uh, and keeping our members and keeping them engaged. I feel like it's kind of hard to, create this like brotherhood and sisterhood on such a national level. And I've seen so many people, so many organizations like literally kicking butt at it about finding opportunities to take the people from the East coast or the West coast and bring them under essentially the same hat. Like it's fascinating the ways that we've found that engagement and belonging in an online environment. And like when I like going back to our entire theme of like the new normal, like, that's what really excites me the most moving forward is I don't think that stuff is going to change. Like I want us to think about the times where it was like a challenge when we were trying to push some organizations to, or some of our chapters to recruit towards the end of the semester. And they're like, well, we don't have time to initiate them. I mean, I was just talking about how they're killing it with some online initiation. Like this is, this is part of our new normal is, is like, taking off some of these barriers we put around ourselves and allowing it to kind of flow the way that it was meant to be and to unite people together, no matter how far away they are. Like I can remember chapter sisters of mine always talking about the hardest thing to do was like find friendship outside of this like hub of college and our chapters that we put us in. And I think what we're doing as national organizations is finding ways to break down those barriers for them. Like what you guys have talked about already, bragging about yourself, killed it. We're gonna flip the script a little bit. Now I want you to brag about somebody else. Yeah. I think it's really important during this time to build up others. So RJ, I'll let you kick it off. Yeah, let's, Amanda, can I? Can we start with you? Is that okay? Work our way back across the screen. Uh, Amanda, I'm just curious. Uh, it's simple. What's one innovative thing? Uh, what's one new normal that you've seen another organization doing that we could celebrate together? Yeah, um, I actually, I'm going to sneak in two quick ones, but one, um, I really enjoyed the organizations and our NPC peers 
or, or any other organizations doing something similar where they are creating resources and putting it on a very public public platform for anybody to engage with. Um, it's, it's not like we're doing a virtual initiation on Facebook Live. We're just talking about mental health or, you know, just different topics, book clubs, things like that, that we're making, again, accessible for lots of people to get a little taste of what Alpha Gamma Delta is or Kappa Kappa Gamma, because they're the two that have made theirs very publicly accessible. Um, we have a couple of things as well. If people are more than welcome to join, but the fact that they're putting it in that space, shining a light on Facebook Live has been really cool. Um, and then I recently read about this um, initiative by a local chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated called Chat with the Frat. And it's just a bunch of alumni that are like, hey, we're all in the medical profession. We could be a really great panel and resource to, for men of our organization to talk about the impacts of COVID-19 um, in a male space, in a black space, in a you know, brotherhood space. And it's just um, it's providing guidance um, to help them find resilience within the brotherhood. I just think that's so cool. And it was just so, it's not something the organization did necessarily, um, but it's just community um, and they're just building community. I think that's so cool. We're just going down the list. Yeah, feel free, Rye, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you uh, so good. Yes, yeah. Rye, go ahead. Uh, Okay. Uh, that was great. Yeah, I think there's so many people doing really exciting things right now, not just individuals, but organizations. Um, I'll give a shout out to Phi Delta Theta. So right now, and if you go to their, I think it's still on their homepage, but um, they're doing some really cool work right now to uh, help their graduating seniors um, find employment opportunities or get connected with alumni. So they, ha they have this full PDF document that has, I don't know how many graduating seniors listed on that, but not just their names and what chapter they are affiliated with, but also a link to their resume, a link to their LinkedIn profile, um, trying to get alumni to say like, this is what this person's interested in. When When is the best time to contact them? And almost every senior says anytime, just call me anytime or like email me. Um, but that's really cool. And I think two, two reasons why they're doing a couple other things too, but I thought that was uh, just the speed in which they put that out and and the connection, what it meant. Um, and I know this is a growth related webinar. So why, why is that important to growth? I think when you're talking about seniors, um, our existing members are going to be the best posters for and word of mouth like that they offer is going to be the best thing for any chapter's recruitment to say, here was what my experience was. It was so positive. It gave me so much. Um, you should absolutely be a part of a fraternity or sorority um, just because of X, Y, Z. And they have another tangible example that's real to them. So being able to help with retention of chapters through this, um, being able to make members feel like this was a great return on investment for them, especially at the end of their uh, collegiate career will only you know, reap benefits for a chapter's health and membership health moving forward, I think. And then two, I'm always a proponent of just like, get outside of our bubble. And I know everyone is like, yeah, speaking to the choir, but we're uh, we're always like a lot, I think a lot in the fraternity and sorority space, we just look at inside at our traditions that we're proud of and the th way we've done things. Um, but anything we can do to make our experience relevant to what the rest of the world finds relevant, which getting a job after college, incredibly relevant for, for everyone, um, makes us feel more uh, like a value add or supports our message of this is a great return on investment through this connection and these relationships you're forming. So um, anyways, yeah, shout out to Fidel. I won't go into any more details and because then I'll just carry on and ramble forever. But I think that's just a really great initiative that they have going on right now. And I think there's a way to even capitalize further on that as it relates to the growth message that could happen later on. Right. That's that's the marketing stuff. Like how I'm so excited to see how Fidel, you know, Jim's on in, in here hanging out with us. I'm excited to see how Fidel uses that as an opportunity for uh, this summer and this fall. That is a very tangible value add to the men that are coming in this summer and this fall. And they're wondering what's the new normal of going to college, getting a degree and getting a job. Uh, in the future, and for for the national organization to be able to point to like this is something very tangible that we're offering to our members, connection across the country that help you get a job. It's huge, it's so cool. Well, I'll I'll pitch it over to you. What are you seeing? So yeah, I think the the first one that did come to mind was also the one that, the first one that was mentioned of um, chat with the fret. Um, that is, I think, honestly. Um, one of the greatest things that I've seen come out of fraternity life in a while. 
Um, and so, it, I mean, the fact that it, it's coming out now, I think is just super timely as well. Um, but then also, um, I know La, La Unidad Latina, Lambda Upsilon Lambda Fraternity Incorporated, um, is hosting webinars as well. Um, and so, but they're not just open to their membership, they're open publicly, right? And so I think that the reason why I find that super important is because our organizations were created to create a change, right? And so um, by engaging the rest of the community, that is our way of, you know, one, showing the value that our organizations have, not only in the campus-based community, but in the community at large, right? Um, in America and globally. And so I think that that to me is um, something I hope will continue, uh, that we continue to engage the public in one, not only showing the expertise that our members have, right, but then also um, really engaging the community in a way where we are collaborating with them in a way to one, in some cases, repair that relationship. Um, and then to build it to make sure it continues to grow. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with some of these initiatives we're talking about. I think that like what we're doing like for our members is reaching non-members as well as a resource, as a marketing tool. And then like, right, like you hit it on like the nail on the head of just like creating a good experience that is, is like worthwhile to talk about and just share that with somebody else. Like that is providing so much value to our current members and then to our future growth as well. RJ, were there any organizations that you saw doing some really awesome stuff you wanted to give a little shout out to? Yeah, I would love to give a shout out. Uh, I saw Kai Omega make a video that was really cool. And it was just celebrating the uh, high school seniors the women that are are not going to they're not experiencing graduation. I don't know if anyone else saw, anyone else saw that video, but it was it was a bunch of their members from chapters all across the country, just very short and sweet, saying, "Hey, um, we want to congratulate you, and we're excited to meet you." And although you didn't get to experience this um, milestone in your life, we're excited to create new memories with you in the future. I was like, this is so simple. This That is beautiful. And so I was like, man, how do we do this? How can we make this an entire, uh, whole entire industry initiative for us to be welcoming these students that are, that didn't get to experience their senior year in high school, the way that they really, they thought it was going to look that really everyone in front of that had ever gone before them got to, you know? So I, I just, I loved what I saw uh, out of that video and I shared it with a bunch of my, a bunch of my friends. Aaron, what about you? Who are some of the things you're seeing? Uh, I'm, I'm really admiring Sigma Delta Tau right now and how their initial instinct was, let's create a retention committee and really like put our eggs in that basket of keeping our members happy. Um, I, I sit on, the, on a committee with them to talk about this and getting together every two weeks to continue the conversation. And one of the things that I really loved is that there's a, like a student representative and how many professionals are sitting there looking to the student and being like, well, what do you think? Would your chapter members jump on this too? And I think that like we are allowing our, we're allowing our chapter members to have so much stake in the game and that's what keeps them involved. Like I, I, I can't praise enough the celebration of that and how their, their initial instinct was, Hey, every single chapter officer, reach out to your own members, make sure that they feel cared for and that we're covering that base ground line of care for each other first before we get into anything else. I loved seeing that. Uh, so push us. Aaron, just real yeah. quick, what you're saying to that just really makes me think about when our founders mm -hmm. were first like doing expansion onto different college campuses. The very first time they were like, let's take this thought of Pi Fi. Let's take this thought of, of whatever organization and bring it elsewhere like how do they problem solve and figure that out and they used one another and it just I just can't help but think about that I'm a huge history nerd so like bear with me but I just that is where my mind goes and it's um you know we always say thinking back to our founders and this is what our founders did but truly nothing more makes me feel connected to them than dealing with this crisis <laughs> and figuring out how to create connection virtually um and having to do it, you know, apart from one another. It's just, it's just so eerie. Just had to mention that. Mm -hmm. 
I, I'm almost like wondering if this is like our new normal is that like we're really getting closer to our roots of what our founders created our organizations on. Like, isn't that what our goal has been forever is trying to get back to that rooted uh, intention. Uh, yeah, I love that, that we're really coming back to that belonging piece. And I'm, I, I think that Amanda, what you're getting at too is, you know, in 2018, 2019, even the beginning of 2020, we had grown to, as an industry to a, to a place where we had created these systems and processes uh, for a lot of different reasons that maybe have become barriers in a way uh, to joining. Uh, and it was as simple as, to your point, like if, if we wanted to try to bring uh, ATO or PiFi or ADPI to any other campus, like we, we would do it through genuine human connection, alumni networking, we would show up and meet people face to face. Like this would obviously like social distancing right now, six feet apart. I'm with you. But like to your larger point is that it's, it's more about like, what are the barriers that we've created over the years that we've almost almost collected, right? As we've like walked and picked up. And, and in 2020, now we have, a, we have an opportunity to ask the question, like, what is, what's a helpful process? What's structure that's, that's truly helpful and caring for our members? And maybe what's, what's a process that's now become a barrier, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious uh, to dive in. Anybody want to, to tackle that? I don't know, Rye, in your mind, like um, as we're thinking about maybe what are some barriers, what are some things that we could do this summer uh, as we're recruiting or um, maybe attracting, uh, marketing to potential new members, what, what maybe exists in the past that we could leave in order to allow as many of the right individuals to find the right organizations? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think there's a silver bullet to this, right? I think um, there's going to be a lot of small things that we can do a little bit differently. And um, one thing that I, while so many organizations are responding with some innovative ideas right now, um, we'll have to be, we don't want to fall into the trap of, oh, we used to do this in person. So the solution to that challenge is to just do that, but find a way to do it virtually. Like that's just taking the same things we've done and put them, putting them in a different medium, which is part of the solution, but not the entire thing. Um, and so for me, it's thinking um, about just pathways to membership that we haven't really explored to their fullest potential. And I think I saw a question come up on this at the beginning. But, you know, one of those is if we know more students might be sticking closer to home um, or taking a gap year or maybe doing the cost analysis um, of a four year traditional you know, undergraduate career and saying, you know, what, maybe this fall I'm going to go to a community college while, while we, I sort out what this looks like. Um, how are we making sure that those students still have a way to find community? How are we expanding what our typical services are or a marketing, if you want to put it, just kind of how are they getting information? Um, or maybe how are we working with transfer advisors at community colleges to help them under help them work with students to say, all right, look, one of the biggest challenges we know students face when they move from community college to a four-year institution is that they have to rebuild their social network again, or that sense of belonging may take a hit because they are away from home. Again, all the things that we talk about traditionally with first-year experience, but in, in a different capacity. So what? So I guess for me, I guess to answer your question, just like what are the different pathways to communication or pipelines to membership that we can explore? Um, I know one thing we're trying to think about at Delta Sigma Phi is, like, is there a non-member service that we can deliver that still meets the mission of the organization and maybe introduces more students in a more accessible way without hitting them straight into like, here we go, it's rush week, go Greek. And they're like, oh man, this is overwhelming. But to say, you know what, maybe we'll offer this leadership series that anyone can be a part of. Maybe it's a bonus for members because it's free for them with your dues, but someone else can pay maybe 10 bucks and you get to get a six months of leadership series and you see what this whole, what we mean by leadership. I don't know. So I'm sure someone from my organization is watching is like, we're going to do that. I'm like, sorry, I'm just speaking for myself and ideas that we're all spitballing around right now. But, um, but anyways, yeah, like, again, I guess to wrap that up is just what are the different value adds or return on investment or pathways to membership that we can explore that we're not doing now? I think that will hopefully get us one step closer. It's so I, good. Guy. I cannot praise enough the idea of like going to community colleges and, and diving into that transfer network because we know that's going to rise. Like we know that like Google searches, people are looking at gap years. People are looking at the community colleges right now. 
And like, that's going to be a huge, like potential right there. And I can speak from my own experience. I spent a year at a community college before I went to uh, Oakland University, where I ended up graduating from. And my first year in my university was so lonely. And I didn't join sorority until I was technically a junior. I wish I would have had somebody who would have tapped into me and, and taught me about the leadership opportunities in the community that was there. And what are, what are the opportunities we have to even get a little bit of exposure in those areas that we know students are going to be kind of driven a little bit more towards that close to home, that lower cost opportunity too. Mm, can't, can't say enough how much I love that. What other thoughts we have on this? I guess I'll go. Um, so I think the other, the other piece, uh, particularly for culture-based Greek organizations is um, also ensuring that we are re- aligning ourselves with what that cultural piece is, right? Um, that is what sets us apart. Um, and that is the community that we are there to serve. Um, and so it's how do we both care for our members, right? But then also show our, our culture virtually, right? Um, because that is another piece where a lot of our events um, do have a cultural significance. Um, or there is a tradition behind it that is cultural. And so um, that piece we have typically done in person, right? And so it, it's how do we continue to educate and spread that awareness virtually? Um, I think to, I think the other part to that though um, is how do we continue to uplift others, right? Um, and so that is... I, I mean, I don't know, I don't have an answer for that yet because I think that's something that we're all kind of working towards and talking through. Um, but I, I think that it's something that we need to refocus on um, because we, our organizations would not exist without people, without community. And the reason why those people join our organizations is for that belonging and for that support. Um, and so for me, um, I think that that's something that we need to reprioritize um, and ensuring that we're doing what we need to do um, to make that happen. I think to what you both are speaking, we have tried to narrow this down into something really digestible and in the, into a formula, really, um, because data rocks. Um, and this isn't necessarily a quantifiable formula, but we've been looking at a lot of our barriers, a lot of our problems, as this membership experience to burden ratio. So, and you can sub out membership experience and, you know, insert anything else that you all have previously mentioned, but that has been our driving force um, really before even COVID. I think that's what the collegiate services team was created for at Alpha Delta Chi, um, was to work with our departments within the organization, to work with our volunteer groups within the organization, to work with our campus partners um, to really solve those problems in terms of what are we making hard for our members? Why are we making it hard to join our organizations? Um, so again, whatever that hurdle is, and then putting it up against the burden ratio um, and balancing it out and trying to understand, like, how do we get here? How do we do some, you know, reverse psychology on it and, and um, just try to see how we can make streamline things again collaborate that's those have been the the mantra the driving force that we've been using in the organization right now and i don't think it's going to solve it's not the silver bullet <laughs> it's not going to solve all of our problems but it's just helping us to get in the framework of again how do we get here how do we get through this how do we prioritize what's important in terms of sharing xyz um, with our members with our what we're asking and expecting of our volunteers and what we're asking and expecting for from our potential new members. Amanda, Rye, Bilal, I think what you just shared right there in combination is just a gold. Uh, lower barriers, remove barriers, remove burden, and serve first. That's that's our marketing strategy. That's our that is our recruitment strategy for this for this summer and this fall. I mean, like it is it is simple. Like that is gold, uh, and we don't have to make it more difficult. We or make it more complicated. It's like no, like make it easier. Uh, make joining, uh, make your uh, our ability to touch the lives of of people, whether they join or not, 
uh, easier uh, this summer, this fall, um, so that people can form their own opinions about what fraternity and sorority life is. Uh, and we know that if, if we're in control of that message and we're, we're lowering the burden and in serving first, that, that it's going to be a positive, uh, a positive impression um, as we're heading into the fall for our members. I, yeah, that was gold. I, I, I want to ask too, it's, it's also, um, you know, post COVID-19 coronavirus, um, stay at home orders, et cetera. It's, it's been hard too. And so I, I want to pose a question to each of you. I'm curious what you think, like, what's, what's the big, um, like what's the biggest challenge facing us from your perspective and, and what can we do to come together to address it? Like what, what's the, the big elephant or the big problem that's in front of us and how can we all work together across the entire industry maybe to address it? Anyone that's eager want to try to tackle that one? Anyone want to go first? I can start. Cool. Uh, well. So I think with, um, some of those challenges. I think the first is, and I this is um, less of a challenge, um, but more of a a continued task that we need to do is continue to re evaluate and um, make sure that there is, that we're continuing to add value, right? So what that value add proposition is, um, particularly when we look at the fall, um, how that is going to um, impact or how it's going to connect to your membership dues, right? Um, so dues are something that as organizations we need to collect, um, particularly because it pays for insurance, um, but then also for the other pieces, for the operational pieces, right? Um, and so making sure that we are continuing to um, show that show our members that there is a value there. Um, I think the other pieces to that though, um, for our headquarters volunteers, um, and our staff is burnout, right? Um, I know a lot of us, even though we are working from home or working remotely, um, unless we're essential staff, and even if we are essential staff, throughout all of this, all of us are working harder, right? Um, I think our hours are blurring together um, and we're working past your typical nine to five or whatever your hours are. And so um, understanding that piece and caring for ourselves and our team um, is a priority. And I think that is a first challenge. Um, then the other part to it, um, as we do think about how we're going to engage potential new members and our, our current members um, remotely or virtually, it's also adapting um, our programming so it is accessible in that way. Um, so I know uh, some of our organizations are doing virtual national conventions um, this summer. And understanding that your three-day convention cannot follow the same schedule that it was going to if you were meeting in person, right? Um, it's unrealistic and unfair to expect that you're going to have your, your students and your members stand in front of a computer all day um, for three days in a row. Um, and so maybe your three-day convention will be broken up into programming throughout a week right? Longer time, but also really caring about your members. So they're not, um, I mean, it's not healthy standing in front of a computer all day. And so, um, so caring for them in that way as well. Um, so I think that's, a, that's another piece. I think we'll all just have like a triple mic drop moment there of like all this gold that just like dropped on the floor and it glitters and it's beautiful. Um, there were so many just like good nuggets in there. Uh, one of the first things I heard you say that I, I honestly love and is that conversation about like the worth of membership, especially when they return in the fall. Like we know we'll be returning in some way, shape or form. It may not look the way it's always been, but we know that our students are going to be engaging in some level of a membership in fall. And we know that these are going to be essentially Generation Z post during COVID students at that time. And they're continuously asking themselves what is the value of the time and money I put into my membership? And is it worth what I'm getting out of it? Um, just so much gold there. I could talk about the generational stuff forever. I'm going to pause myself and see what Ryan and Amanda have to say about all this. 
I was just going to note the collaboration piece again, because it is just so vital that we advance fraternity and sorority together. I mean, that was always the goal. That's what we do in this industry. That's our purpose as an industry. That's why we meet as professionals in December and at lots of other conferences. Um, it's to advance fraternity and sorority together. Um, but now more than ever, because I think the question to our non-members is going to, again, what is the relevancy of Greek life? And then to our members, how are you prioritizing Greek life? How are you prioritizing your membership? Um, and so if we can try to help answer those questions together and then navigate, start there and then navigate the unique ways in which our specific organizations answer that question, um, I think that's gonna be better in the long run. Um, huge shout out to Chi Omega. We, uh, they were so gracious in letting us to connect with them um, about something non-COVID related, which was also really nice of them to take a pause and say, yeah, we'll talk to you about this completely random other thing that is you know, not relevant to the current times. Um, but they were just so gracious and willing to connect with us. And I think that if NPC groups, as we navigate the decisions around primary recruitment um, come together, if NPC groups can support our NAPA groups and you know, ISC groups that are supporting our sorority groups and things like that, it's, it's just going to be a really cool thing. And I'm excited to see the collaboration at its highest level because we're answering the issues and the impacts of COVID. Amanda, I, I love that. Aaron and I have talked a lot about like what we do at the national organization level and, and, the, and how we model behavior we can expect it to show up in our in our chapters. And I think for me in fraternity and sorority, there's an inherent hope built into our system. Like there's a good news that in fraternity and sorority, no matter what organization you're a part of or whatever council you're a part of, the truth is that you are not alone. And so if we if we really believe that truth and we believe in that hope, and that's why we're all here. At the national level, we have an opportunity to, to model that hope for our members. I love it. Yes. Like together is the only way through. I, I firmly believe that. Right and thoughts. our campus partners, too. I think oh. I failed to mention them. But our campus partners, too, the non-FSA ones, the ones in academics and admissions and all of that, too. So wanted to plug them, too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. I thought big challenge in front of us. How can we work together to solve? Yeah, uh, this is. I think this is the first question I went last on. This is challenging to like, like answer after everyone that gives all this good advice and feedback. Um, I think maybe this thought came in when Bilal was speaking. Um, although Amanda, yes, collaboration is the only way. Like that's that's the only way we're gonna be better at the end of this than than before across all our stakeholders. Um, but I think it's. Uh, I think Bilal, you had mentioned something about just like the financial component of this uh, as well, and um, that things. You can't just duplicate like your convention the same and you have to be mindful of time and, and things of that nature. So all that for me just kind of resonated in the human impact of everything that we're facing will be the biggest challenge. And that goes beyond fraternity. It's just understanding how people are going to uh, either appreciate or evaluate relationships differently, uh, hopefully stronger, but definitely differently. Um, and how can we better understand that? So that way the experience we're delivering factors in that new adjustment and what a relationship means to people. That's gonna have obviously ramifications throughout all, all that we do, whether it's a social event, a service event, just the act of recruitment, uh, the words you say to someone, the way in which you communicate with them, um, all that will just change based on how we've reevaluated human human interaction through this. And for, I guess, um, for the business side of things, I think we're going to have to check ourselves a little bit um, with this uh, push to be efficient with resources and time and be very business oriented. I think a lot of headquarters staff, especially, oh man, just every penny more so than ever, uh, an organ everyone, I mean, just every person, every organization entity will be doing that and trying to push the resources to the limit, while at the same time recognizing that at our core, we're, we're learning organizations for our members and our students are not only trying to operate an efficient chapter, they're trying to learn for the first time how to operate on their own as an individual, how to lead others and communicate. And that takes time and patience. And those two things are can be at odds with each other. So I think for me, the big challenge is that first time I'm just evaluating um, human relation relationships. But then second, um, just that be, be mindful of the balance of business and efficiency. And we're learning organizations, our members are learning, and that sometimes or often takes time. Um, so we need to be mindful of that and not just expect all of a sudden that 
everyone's going to be jumping on every word we say because that's not going to be the case. So, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, I love the we're learning organizations and what better way for us to learn than when we get to collaborate. And I think all of us kind of jumped on a little bit of a piece of that collaboration and how really needed it is right now. And so whether you're sitting as an attendee or one of our wonderful panelists today, like I think that what we can leave here on the note of is that how much we need each other right now. We need each other so that we don't have that burnout. We need each other to bounce ideas off of, to challenge each other's conversations, to break down those barriers, and to really learn from each other's mistakes and successes. Uh, I hope that this was something to spark some conversation for some people, um, or to reach out and be like, I oh, don't know, these people were pretty cool. What are their email addresses? We're happy to get them for you. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here today. I want to like thank our our our, uh, our guest. If you've got the emojis on there, go ahead and like give them some applause. Um, some some whoop whoops, some heart eyes, whatever that may look like. Uh, look at all that love come in. We got some in the in the audience too. Uh, just thank you guys for being here. Uh, just to as we wrap up, any any closing thoughts that you have on the topic of growing during the time of COVID? Any any advice that you want to give to those watching today? I would just add that I, while I love a good email and I appreciate the plug for, for connecting with anybody who's listening today, I'm also a huge fan of snail mail. Um, and having a new home has certainly been um, a good outlet for that because lots of people want to love on my new mailbox and whatnot. But I think something that I kind of got away from, even though I'm home and right next to all my resources, is I stopped writing thank you notes and things like that for a little while while we were in the middle of dealing with the pandemic, which is like totally normal um, or whatever. But I, I recently have been back to my um, penmanship and writing letters and things like that. So I, I, it's not necessarily a, a big gold piece of advice or anything like that, but I've just found that super helpful in terms of connecting lately. And if, you know, we can start with a letter, an email, a phone call, a text message, the five for five initiative that just happened the other day was so cool. Um, so really just, just making it happen and starting that collaboration with something simple is all that it really takes. So um, happy to share my um, home address possibly as well for some of that snail mail or if anybody wants some love in their mailbox, happy to send you a letter too. I think I'd uh, add on, I, th I think just provide tangible things. I think we're, we're going to make a lot of systemic changes, hopefully, to the way we approach fraternity and recruitment and growth and some things that our members won't see, but they'll feel later on. But sometimes that's not real enough. Um, and so even just little things and we have a shout out to Fired Up for the videos y'all created um, and I think shared out this week. Um, just uh, I say little things. I, that, I'm not sure the lift on that. That, that could have been a pretty big lift for y'all. But um, I think just saying like, hey, why don't you do a virtual interest session? OK, well, that's different than here's a template you can use just plug in your own picture or just let us let me know what photo you want to use and I'll build it into this and I'll join you and co-facilitate your virtual interest session. Like that is maybe not the most earth shattering thing, but to be there with them, to, to offer something tangible, that six page virtual interest session PowerPoint deck or whatever might mean more to them than some policy change or huge organizational shift you made that might have better or bigger impact. Um, but that feels real to them. And I think the more we can come down from the clouds and say, here's something real and tangible for you, member, um, the better off we'll be. Bilal, you're, you're muted right, right quick. Is it? That's all right. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Thanks so much. Amanda, Rai, Bilal, thank you so much for joining us and uh, for sharing, uh, having this awesome conversation. Thank you, everyone who joined in on uh, over here in the chat box. We had an active chat box today. That was a blast. And I, I just want to reinforce the message that uh, you are not alone. So I know I can speak for myself. I see heads shaking with Bilal and Rai and Amanda and Aaron. Like if you're out there and you're feeling tired or alone, or uh, you just need someone to talk to, or maybe you want to talk about uh, maybe some new normals that we could dream of this summer and this fall, feel free to reach out to me, email, text, snail mail, 
um, I, I would love, um, I, I just want to make sure everyone hears like you are not alone. We're in this together. Everybody stay fired up and enjoy your weekend. Bye everybody. Thank you.